Okay, let's see. Okay. Queen B, good to see you. All right. All righty. Now, let me see here. Be nice if this worked. <laughs> okay. Queen B, good to see you. Uh, all right. All right, folks. All right. Now, let me see. I have a lot to cover tonight. <laughs> in the interest okay. that <laughs> in the interest you. that a lot of folks, all you know, right, folks. in many ways I we are now in today. Hold on, let me turn in this one down. Okay. That <laughs> whoa. First of all, we are. I am only broadcasting on YouTube tonight. Then what I'm going to do is upload it to the other channels that we normally live stream to simultaneously, which are Twix, Twix, <laughs> Twitch, uh, Facebook, uh, Periscope, and Twitter. Okay. Um, of course, in Twitter it'll just be linked. So what I'm going to do is start now. Um, hi, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this up into two parts. Okay. First, it's going to be a slideshow from last year. And there are a lot of people that are in the South beekeeping. This is the Bee Lady Apiary. If you watch, if you go to our channel and you look at the um, video that I have up for going out to check our hives now, you'll see that we have somewhere between, I don't know, what is it, dear? He, bee Man's in the chat. 26, 27, we don't know because we opened one hive. There was a moth in there, um, you know, one of those moth, wax moths. And then we thought, well, that's it for the hive. They're dead. And then the next time uh, we went back down there, hive was great, flying all over. So in that interest, I pulled um, one of the presentations that I did last year on common mistakes that um, beginning beekeepers make. Those of you that were here with us know it was a whole series from deciding to get bees and what it means and on and on and on and on. So that's going to be our first part. After that tonight, what I plan to do is to put that presentation up on he on YouTube as a, as a slideshow. So those that are here now can just go right through and see it. All right. That's very important. Um, like I say, we're here to support people that are beekeepers. We can kind of floundering back and forth. I know I did a couple of craft videos, which didn't quite jump off. Off drops, folks. So um, we're going to start with that. Then, as usual, I have my 10 shout outs for channels. Um, this week, I took from people who commented on my videos. I don't ask people to comment. People that have come over and commented. And... Um, also, people who have been in the live stream. Okay. So if you don't want your, you know, you don't want me talking about your channel or you know, giving you a shout out, just let me know. Um, okay, so we're gonna start with the screen share, and I'm gonna read through very quickly. All righty. Let me see here. Hey, Duncan 1900 and Homestead Maker, as I said. First, the intellectual stuff. Next, the, ten, the shout outs, okay? Um, while you're here, don't forget to give a thumbs up. You want to sub, that's up to you, but I don't want to force anybody to sub our channel. It'd be nice, but okay. Typical here. Okay. As soon as this gets to you, I'm waiting for this screen share. Oh, duh. You know what I, I forgot to do? Let me go back over here. Uh, over here, you know, I, this is, I haven't used um, Google Hangouts in so long. Sure. Sorry, folks. I haven't used Google Hangouts in ages, but I thought, okay, I don't want to deal with OBS. I'm just going to use Google Hangouts and upload this to it. Okay, here we go. This is for anybody that's in North Carolina. 
anyone in North Carolina. All righty. The North Carolina State Beekeepers Association, there is your link, is, um, and this was last year, just passed, oh, for goodness sakes, let's get a, um, let's get a group here. Let's go. Um, nope, we don't want that yet. Oh, remember this last year, dear, and I'm working without a mouse. Okay. Um, we'll give you a grant and all you need is to be certified certified. And all you need to be certified is to take a written test and an oral hive inspection examination. Who can't do that? Okay. All right. So let's go down and start with the, mis with the mistakes new beekeepers often make. Let's go down. One, assessing a beehive's health by how many bees are flying in and out. It is a good practice for new beekeepers to observe their hives from the outside on a weekly or better yet, daily basis. We try to do this on an every other day and sometimes we're down there every day. Okay, you can gather useful information by doing this. You might see that your bees are bringing in pollen or you might catch ants making an effort to go into your hive. It is a good idea to keep notes every time you observe your hives and to keep notes so you can become familiar with what's normal for your bees in a specific hive as far as heavy traffic in and out and or the number dead. You're going to see dead um, bees around the hive. Now, however, um, dead bees at the entrance. Any changes in these behaviors and numbers or numbers may help you know that something else might be going on inside your hive that is not normal or typical for that specific hive. Remember folks, every hive is gonna be different. You can get your bees from the same place. You can split, you can have a split. You're gonna split one hive into two. They're still going to act different, okay? For example, you may have one hive that is always very busy coming and going, and if suddenly the number of bees slows down, it might indicate that something has changed inside the hive. There is no replacement for thorough hive inspections. Folks, you cannot inspect that hive from the outside by looking at the bees coming and going. Sometimes beginning beekeepers may notice changes on the outside, and when they open their hive, the problem, whatever it is, has progressed to the point of doing a lot of damage. New beekeepers will gain experience and confidence by performing regular hive inspections. The recommendation for new beekeepers is often that they perform a hive inspection once every two to four weeks, but no more than that. Inspecting your beehives, which is opening up their home and disturbing it is stressful for your bees. Inspections may also upset the atmospheric conditions within a hive. Remember, they keep it a certain way in there. In addition, it is more likely that new bee colonies and hives are less stable than older established ones. So you have to find that, that fine, um, that fine uh, medium. Bee man's on the, on the questions over there. Hey, two family. Um, hey, Loma Acres. Hello. Okay. So you want to be in there every, oh geez, every other week. The short story of that one is, or the, 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 the uh, go, well, what this one is saying is, do not go down there and look at your hive and go, oh, this is great. Bees are coming and going and they're bringing in pollen and yada, 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 and things are wonderful. Oh no, you have to get inside that hive. There are tons of videos uh, from people who will do hive inspections. Uh, I recommend Jerome's Bee Farm, um, Pickerick, one, uh, Big Bear Homestead. He is a trapper beyond all other. He just, um, he builds swarm traps. He just put four up a few weeks ago. The next week they were awful, okay? Let's see. Um, Southern Ark Homestead is another one that you want to go over there. Nina is very, very into bees and getting swarms. Okay, number two. This one is critical, folks. Not recognizing your hive is queenless. This is often the one biggest mistake new beekeepers make. Sometimes this is because new beekeepers may think that their beehives who have lost their queen will make a drastic change in behavior 
that will alert them. Hey, our queen is gone. Even if your hive's queen is gone, you will see a lot of bee traffic going in and out. And during an inspection, you will see honey and a lot of bees inside. This causes the beekeeper to think everything is just fine. At first, your beehive will look normal, but, with, but without a queen to lay eggs, the hive's bee population will begin to gradually decline. Your first sign is you will not be seeing any eggs and then no larva. The larva is critical. You may see eggs, but the larva is critical. That's what you're looking for. That's that little curly thing that looks like a worm in there that has not yet been sealed over. You may not be able to tell the difference between drone eggs and worker bee eggs. And so you'll see a bunch of drone eggs, which we'll get into in a minute, and you'll think everything is fine. Okay, not so. So we're going to go on here. Every day, some of your worker bees will die of old age and they will not be replaced. Worker bees, I think it's like 40 days, 40 to 45, I think. The population will start to noticeably become less. You may see an increase in honey and pollen because without any brood, the nurse bees don't have anything to do. So they will begin foraging and bringing in pollen. And you're going to say, oh my goodness, tons of pollen, tons of uh, um, bee bread, you know, all this great stuff. Honey, they're making it. Not so, folks. You have to assess the whole thing. You have to look at the whole picture. If your beehive is without a queen for too long, you will reach a point that can't be fixed. Oh, okay. We ran into this. Most beekeepers starting out run into this. Your worker bees may very well be laying eggs in a last ditched effort to save the hive. And because worker bees cannot lay fertilized eggs, their eggs can only produce drones. All animals are programmed toward survival. Worker bees, it's an amazing thing. They're a little um, high broussard. Um, Okay, yeah, Bee Man's handling, handling the questions. Hi, Food Forest, good to see you. Um, worker bees, their ovaries will change. Don't ask me why. They're female. Okay, something changes and they start laying eggs. They're trying to save the hive, but it's only drones. Drones only eat and fertilize the queen. So your hive is on a path of extinction. See laying workers. Folks, that is, to me, I call it the kiss of death because what's going to happen is you're going to, all of a sudden, your population is going to go down. You're going to see all these eggs. You're going to go, what's the problem? Well, they're all drones. Okay. So, and when drones hatch, all they're going to do is eat. All right. So if you put a queen in there, the um, laying workers are going to kill it. So there are all kind of nifty ways to try to save this. I, I know that Bee Man has successfully oops i know that bee man has successfully done it don't ask me what he did but i mean we tried it a couple of other times um so you know i don't know it's just you don't want to go there you have to find that queen if you know if you cannot find that queen look for larva don't just look for eggs bee man can you put in the chat how many days after the lar how many the there's a number of days and it's gone by my head right now. You want to see larva because that means the queen has been there so many days before. How many is that, dear? You just put in that number? Oh, Walmart, go shopping, share. Okay, so nobody wants to go there. Okay, uh, very few people can get out of that situation. I think Jerome's bee yard may have gotten out of that. Number three. Leaving out frames or placing empty supers. Okay, as a new beekeeper, you will quickly learn that your bees will build comb in any empty space you give them. Beehives are built to take this into consideration and each part fits perfectly so that your bees will build only in the spaces you want them to or you want them to build. That's the Langstroth hives we are talking about, the ones that use 10 frames. They're still gonna seal those things up. They're going to build everywhere, on the inside of the cover, all over the place, okay? Um, you leave a space open, they're going to build in there. So you want to keep 10 frames in unless you're doing something extraordinary. Uh, something else that people are going into, I want to mention here. Bees work 
up, think chimney. They look up, they work up. This was one of the first things I learned at our B club. They do not work out, they go up. It is very, well, you, it is very probable that you will have empty hives on the end of your deep, which is your big box. And you'll think, ah, oh, well, they got to go fill those up first. I wouldn't wait, folks, <laughs> okay, because they're going to go up. At that point, you need to put on a super or another deep. If you want to run with two deeps, fine. We are running with a deep and then all, run, all other supers because we don't want to lift all that stuff. So you can make that decision, okay? Um. But remember, they don't go out. They're going to go up. And you're going to say, well, you know, they have another frame to um, fill up. Folks, do you know how fast bees can fill up a frame? You have to keep ahead of them. You have to give them space or they're going to swarm on you. Now, something else we do. when, If and when you see a swarm cell, which is the cell that's going to hang from the bottom, and we have pictures of these in our other presentations, which I promise you, I'm going to get up. I'm going to put them on as um, in sequential order uh, as slideshows because that's an easy thing for me to do. You're going to see these things hanging. We brush them off and then we just put um, we put an, another box on, usually a super, well, mostly a super. The other kind of big uh, thing you're going to see on the frame itself is a supersedure cell. It's going to be maybe the size of a quarter, B-man, nickel, something like that, okay? That means they don't like their queen. She's not laying right. They don't like her temperament, and they're going to get another one. They're, they're going to, um, they don't like her. They don't want to leave the hive. They just want to get rid of her and get something else. B-man, any questions on this, please put them in the chat, okay? B-Man will answer them, okay? Now, moving on. Um, so the traditional Langstroth hives are built to hold either eight or 10 frames. If you put less frames in your hive box than it is made to hold, your bees will build honeycomb in the empty space. If you add a super without frames, I don't know why you would, folks, but if you don't, to your hive, you will end up with a whole super filled with cross comb. They will um, use that box as a top bar hive, which are the hives. We don't like them. A lot of people don't like them. Those are the hives that just have the top bar. And then the bees build that comb. Uh, they're very good if you are into or wanting to get just honeycomb. You know, the honeycomb you see in the stores or something. Because theoretically, it's destroying your hive every time you take out all that work they've done. But, you know, if you want to try it, I would just leave one empty frame and see what happens when you get around to you know exploring those things. Um, this may be a challenging situation to fix and there is really no reason to do it. Therefore, it may be better to add the proper number of frames to your hive. An exception to this would be after hive inspection, you may want to use nine frames instead of 10 on a frame box. And as long as you space them out evenly, this would be okay. This would give you more room to inspect your frames. This is a matter of, Okay, you need more room, okay, to, to inspect your hives. Uh, four, harvesting honey too early or taking too much honey. Uh, now, we're in the north, and there's there are a lot of differences. Well, not too many. Bees are bees, but there are differences between bees in the north and bees in the south. Remember, if you were here last year, we talked about choosing your bees. If you are just, you know, if, if you have the luxury of saying, well, I only want Carnolian, I only want Italian. Some bees, all bees do different things. Some have a tendency to swarm. Like if they don't like the situation, they'll swarm in a heartbeat. Others, you know, don't eat a lot of honey and others do eat a lot of honey. Some get through winter well. Mo most people I know will like us. You're just going to get bees. You're going to get a package or you're going to get a... Uh, a um a nuke on our channel we do have a um a video installing our 27th nuke it shows you how we're installing our we got a nuke and install it's showing you 
and I'm talking while B-Man is doing it, showing you, I mean, you're seeing it right there, how we're installing it. We also, um, in our in our presentations last year, went over putting the packages in, the pros and cons. We also talked about how it used to be that packaged bees were cheaper than um, nuke, nuke, nukes of bees. Not so much anymore. They're pretty much the same price. Bees are going up. Okay, so as soon as you get comfortable with this, you're going to want to get on a swarm list, which is through a bee club or the fire department or anywhere. And you're, you're going to want to, you know, get on a swarm list at your church. We did a woman at the church, okay, at our church who called up, you know, she lived by herself. Oh, my God, they're here. And we went out that night and got them. So, and go out and get your swarms, okay? It's not that difficult. Okay. So I've taken off there, but I hope it's interesting information. In the beginning, it may prove challenging to know how much honey you should take from one of your hives and also when to take it away. A general rule is not to take honey away from a beehive its first year. Usually these bees are not strong enough yet to make an excess amount and they will probably need all they have in order to survive through winter. If your colony is strong and has plentiful stores, how much you can harvest varies greatly by geographical location. Again, location, location, location. If you're up here where we are, and in the winter, we spoke about how we prepare our bees for the winter. We um, take the frames out, we put them in the freezer. We have a chest freezer in our garage just for the bees, okay? We put frames of their own honey back in there, and we put bee food in there. We pack them up really good for the winter. But then again, look where we are. Okay. So that's how that goes. If you're in the South, I don't know. If you're in the South and you, and you tend to have freezing weather, you're going to want to watch the weather and be ready to go out there with something to protect those bees. Uh, a couple of things you may want to do is swap out your screen board on the bottom for a solid uh, board until you get, you know, until um, it's over, that cold snap is over. And if you're somewhere where the temperatures are going to be blazing hot, you're not going to want a bottom board all summer because you have to have a lot of ventilation. You're going to want a screen board on the bottom. Okay? Things like that. All right. So um, back here where it says the colony is strong, and I over went over that location, location. Be conservative. Seek advice from local beekeepers on how much honey should be left with the bees. Because it all depends on what your bees are going to do, how you have to set them up for the winter, okay? Your, bee, your bees, you know, I hope you know how they get through the winter. We'll go over that in a future whatever, future uh, stream. Not feeding new colonies. Oh, this is a good one. It could very well be. Now, these are not our words, folks. This is from, these are, this is research gathered from other sites that we trust that our B club trust that is putting information out there that is pretty well on the mark. Okay. This is not all, oh, you know, the B lady apiaries did this. Oh, no, 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 no. This is information um, out that's out there on these great sites. Um, one of them, honey, what was that B site? Rosanna, hi, you would put it in there. Oh, what was it? Uh, B wellness or something like that. Yeah. Uh, in fact, we um, last year was our first year, and we'll probably do it again, joined in the um, New York uh, study for bees to see how things are going. Really nice. Anyway, not feeding new colonies. It could very well be that some beekeepers feed their bees sugar and water just a tad too often. But one very important exception is when you buy a package of bees, you must feed them. Because a package doesn't come with anything, folks. A nuke is going to come with Usually a couple frames of bees, a couple frames of honey, a couple frames of brood, and they know they're queen. That's an advantage over the package where your bees are literally, they say package, but they're down there separated from the queen. They don't know they're queen. They have to get to know their queen and she has to start um, building brood. So they're going to need food. She's going to start building or building, bleh, laying brood as soon as she hits an empty frame. And... A lot of this stuff, I mean, what do you think the bees feed their brood? I mean, while their brood is there, you know, hatching and in the little cells, the nurse bees are feeding them honey. So if you take their honey, 
they don't have anything to feed them. Another thing, you go there and you look at your frames of honey. You go, oh, wow, this is beautiful. A whole frame of capped honey. You put it back. You go back in a week or whatever, and you take it out. And you look, you go, gee, this is odd. Some of the little cells have holes in them, or they're empty. That's because the bees are starving. They're eating their own honey, okay? You see that. If you're not feeding them, you have to start. Moving on. Okay, back to the sugar and water. Uh, packaged bees are confused, weak, and they do not have any honey. It will take at least a month of consistent feeding to get them on their feet. If you do not do this, most likely you will lose your bees in the fall. Unless you live in a very nectar-rich area, you typically must feed new nuke colonies as well. If for any reason you are hesitant to feed your nuke, try letting them sit unfed for a week and then inspect to see if they are building any new comb. If they are not, you need to feed them. Feeding stimulates beginning colonies of honeybees to build new comb and increase their population by the queen laying brood. It is imperative that new colonies do these activities in the spring so that they have a decent chance to survive in the winter. When it comes to feeding swarms, you have caught, it may not be necessary, but if you notice your swarm getting smaller, you may have to begin feeding them. Many beekeepers recommend feeding swarms as well. I personally, and, and my husband and I go back and forth about this, I feed everything. I just say, keep feeding them because what will happen is if they are getting enough, they won't eat it. And we've used top high feeders, which are nice, and we've used... Um, Oh, what are those things? The outside feeders, which are basically the mason jars with the little plastic part. I, I, the name is over me, but I, I know what I can. You'll know what I mean. Okay. Oh, I have to make a note about something because I got to remember. I want to go back to that queenless hive. Okay. If you open your hive and you catch it in between somehow that your queen isn't there and you don't know what's going on, I recommend, oh, where do you get it? Betterbee.com. They now sell a pheromone for the hive. It's a little like strip, like um, a piece of yarn, but it's, it's solid. And I don't know if it comes in a package of one or two or whatever. Oh, thank you, uh, Bee Man. Be well, NewYorkBeeWellness.org is New York State site for New York beekeepers. So, but the uh, new the stuff on there is pretty good. So, you put that in your hive, and it makes them think there's a queen. So all is well, and the, the workers don't start. And then you have time to figure out what you're going to do. Buy a queen, figure out something, but it gives you some time. Now you have to get a queen. But, you know, at least it gives you some time and keeps the workers from laying. No. Okay. The reason your swarm may get uh, smaller is when bees swarm, the first thing they do is, well, the, what they do is they all gorge on honey. They're bulking up for the trip. They walk the, the queen around the hive, around the hive. She has to lose weight so that she can get through to get out. Okay. So she's going to be smaller and they're going to be bigger to make the trip. And um, if you catch a swarm and you notice, gee, these bees aren't as chubby anymore, that's why. And, and you got to feed them. I recommend feeding them. We use sugar and water, uh, depending on how I feel. Usually a one-to-one. -one. Depends. There's not a number six on this, guys. I remember. I figured that out last year. But anyway, I recommend feeding them. And we also add an additive, honey bee healthy. Recommended by everybody in our bee club has never steered us wrong, and we uh we use that. Get it on Amazon anywhere. It's a little pricey. You can use it every other feeding, or I know over on Wholesome Roots, she has a mixture that she puts together uh with different oils, and she uses lecithin so that the oils stay in the water. You may want to go over there and see what it is she's using. Not wearing a proper bee suit, gloves, and veil. New beekeepers have an idealized idea of what beekeeping will be like. Yeah, I got that right, folks. They have seen videos of experienced beekeepers inspecting their hives with no bee suit on, and they think <coughs> they can do the same. The truth is, every, every seasoned beekeepers 
seasoned beekeepers get stung when they are not wearing their suit, but they have experience in keeping their bees calm and what to do if they are not calm. This is something you might learn over time, but for now, it's better to be safe and wear all of your beekeeping protection. I do. I also smoke them heavily. Bee Man smokes them lighter. I smoke them heavy. So we usually split up. I go, you go smoke your hives. I'm going to go smoke mine. <laughs> okay. I don't take any chances. I'm not afraid of them, but I want to keep everything calm. Because I have asthma and COPD, I've been stung, but nothing's happened. But keep in mind, even if you're not allergic to bees, one time could be the right time. So we have EpiPens. Okay. Um, even if you are not allergic to bees, too many stings have the ability to send you to the hospital. Just because your bees were calm during one inspection does not mean they will always be calm. They are very sensitive to atmospheric pressure before a thunderstorm, um, things like that, that, you know, things like that. Bee temperament is influenced by many things. So resist the temptation to make decisions based on only a few hive inspections. It's going to take time to know, to get to know your bees. And even then, anything unknown to you, but known to them may cause them to behave differently. In other words, they know something you don't know. We don't like this queen or, you know, we don't have a queen or something. This number eight, which would be seven, not using your smoker. New beekeepers who want to be natural are sometimes reluctant to use their smoker. The smoke makes the bees think a wildfire is near and triggers them to gorge on honey. The bees do this so that if they need to evacuate, they do not lose all their honey. It keeps them distracted from what you are doing and the smell of the smoke also blocks chemical signals the bees send to one another. Signals that might organize a defense attack against you. Now, folks, you go out, you're in your beehive and you're being as careful as you can. You kill a bee. We're all going to kill a bee. Then it sends off an odor and they all go on an alarm. You don't smell it, but they smell it. And all beginning beekeepers, if you see your bees all lining up in a row on one of those frames, it's time to smoke or get your leaf blower or something because they're coming or brush them or something. That's your sign of attack. If they all line up, like too many are getting killed or something, okay? Very subtle sign. Eh, attack, but you know the little bees, but still, you know. Um, signals, okay, da, 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 da. To a new beekeeper, this can all sound pretty stressful. It might lead them to believe that they are better off not smoking their bees. Or maybe the beekeeper just did not know exactly what the smoke did. And they are taken by surprise when the bees attack them. When you do not use your smoker, the bees will likely react defensively. They will sting your bee suit and they will die. You may end up killing a large number of bees in this way and you could also endanger your neighbors. If you're close to neighbors, folks, if the bees become really angry, if your neighbors are getting stung each time you inspect your beehives, they may grow weary. They, well, I suppose they may grow weary of tolerating you having bees. You may report you may report, they may report you to the city or try to destroy your hive. There are some other options to smoke that some folks think are less stressful to use. Essential oil and water mixed together can be used as a spray on your bees, or you can also lightly spray them with sugar water mix. If you're going to try one of these methods, it might be wise to have a smoker at the ready in case you need it. Okay. Any questions? If you got any questions, uh, keep going there with a uh, bee man. Okay, now this is kind of one that is, you know, it is what it is. You know, some people can only afford one, but I don't know. Starting with just one colony. Most experienced beekeepers recommend that you start with at least two beehives. Taking care of two hives instead of one will not take that much more work. And it has several advantages. First, when you have two colonies, you learn more. Having the opportunity to compare two hives side by side will give you the chance to learn twice as much. Perhaps you will want to try two different hive styles or two different breeds of bees. You might compare the success of a newt versus a package. That's a good one to do, folks. We have never done a package, okay? Not that we don't believe in them, we just never have. 
Second, having two hives will give you the advantage of using one hive to help the other if necessary. Um, if one of your new beehives is weak and the other one is strong, you can take some brood, meaning a frame of the brood from a strong one, from a strong colony to help build up your weak beehive. They don't care, folks. They don't know the difference. Also, if you lose your queen in one beehive and they do not make a new one, you can take a frame of brood from one hive and try to make the hive without a queen, make a queen from them, which means the workers will hatch, say, hey, there's no queen in here and start making a queen cup. Only worker bees can make a queen cell for the queen, okay? Um, Remember, they can only make a queen from eggs that are laid by a queen. Finally, unfortunately, new beekeepers often lose their hives. Having two beehives gives you a better chance of keeping one alive in your first year. Folks, you, you know, most beekeepers say you're going to lose some hives. I know that sounds distressing, but, you know, if you do, you got to just, I don't know what to tell you. We oh. Last year, I don't even know, was our fifth year, and we lost six during the winter. This year, we're about at one, maybe? I don't know. But, you know, we learn. Okay, last year, and this is a biggie. Being satisfied with a limited knowledge of beekeeping. The beekeepers may be totally happy with not understanding what they are looking at when they go into their hives to do a hive inspection. They usually just go into their beehives to take away honey or to be sure there are still bees alive in there. Oh, wow. Although you may, fi you may find this shocking. I'm going to put an A in there later. Talking to myself, folks. Surveys show this is a large number of beginner beekeepers. Bees are really, truly interesting insects. And although you can become overwhelmed with all of the information on beekeeping available, it is better than not taking an interest at all. If neglected and treated correct and treated correctly, you're, oh, incorrectly. Sorry, folks. Your bees will either swarm or die. Both actions are not happy outcomes. Keep learning and enjoy your bees. Okay, that's a fast run through because we have about a half an hour of um, um, some channel shout outs, which I really want to do. Um, as time gets closer to um, the bee season, I may kick these shout outs to another day. I don't know. I will keep doing them because I think it's great. Okay, now shout out time. Any questions on bees, you got to put them in the chat for bee man. All righty. Now, let's see here. Uh, hide. Uh, okay. Where am I? Your screen and what? You are screen sharing and presenting to everyone. Well, what happened there? Oh, wait a minute. Chat. Screen share. No, I don't want to do that. Oh, there you are. Okay. I'll wait till everybody gets here. Okay. Ah, oh, some really good channels tonight, folks. Okay. Without, without, I don't know. Is it without waiting? I don't know. First is, I have about nine or 10. I don't know. Uh, first is cab seven. Now I'm taking what I'm saying right out of the, the uh, descriptions. Okay. Family friendly and inspirational streams shares life experiences. Uh, he grows perennial flowers, veggies, and raised in raised beds and five gallon buckets. He paints, he landscapes in acrylic, loves nature, is an Eagle Scout because once you're an Eagle Scout, you're always an Eagle Scout. My hubby is an Eagle Scout. Cab is the Order of the Arrows, and he's also served in the United States Air Force for four years. I believe he li lives in Pennsylvania. Oh. Um, so, <coughs> folks, if you're ever down, you need a lift, you think, oh, everybody else is doing so great, yada, yada, yada. Uh, you go on over to Cab 7. You know, he was on today. I didn't get a chance to go in there. But... It's a safe place to go. 
He'll, you know, no matter what your problem is, he has his email there. Um, you can reach out to him. If there's a crisis in the YouTube community, community, he's one of the first ones to go there, okay, to answer the call. Second, Megan's blog. Oh, in fact, I want to go back to Cab. Cab is a huge YouTube supporter. Okay, Megan's blog, another huge YouTube supporter. Megan <coughs> it was born in South China. South China, South Africa. Okay, and I love her accent. However, she is currently in China. Uh, formerly, be, previous to this, she was in Thailand teaching English. She's a teacher over there. And um, she's teaching English in China. Her young daughter, five or six or so, she was in kindergarten last year, is going to um, kindergarten in China. Uh, she does these beautiful five dimensional five folks diamond paintings and it's just beautiful uh she has a blog twitter instagram snapchat facebook and email they're all posted on her channel megan's blog i don't have the link i should probably do that but um hey loma okay great no don't give up loma okay so last year Last year, unfortunately, um, and I know I, I know Megan's blog. These are the you know channels I know really well. Um, she lost her mother. Uh, her mother was diagnosed with lung cancer and just went out really fast. It was very sad. Uh, but she's very uplifting and she streams. I'm gonna say during our nighttime because of the time difference. June Gall, she's another huge YouTube supporter. June has lupus, Hashimoto disease, gastro, P A R Piraeus, pulmonary hypertension, degenerative disc and joint disease, COPD. Yet she's an amazing woman. She's married, goes live all the time. She's an oxygen user, and currently she's on a treadmill all the time because she she needs a double lung transplant okay and she's doing everything she has to do in order to qualify for that and one is to start walking and walking and walking god love her she's all over the place she makes beautiful beaded jewelry uh i have one coming to me when it comes i'll wear it next week next one i happen i just happen to come across who are just amazing to me North Country Off Grid. I mean, these folks are off grid. They are preparing, they're preparing for their first bees. Okay. They're a family of five who built their homestead ground up with cash off grid. They're in Northern Idaho. They have three children. They have farm animals working toward a self sustaining debt-free farm and lifestyle, follow them on their journey to complete freedom. Amazing people, very gentle people, a lot of videos up, a huge YouTube following. And I think you'll, you'll find something over there you'll like. You'll find something on all these channels. Okay. Oh, uh, Tony's Reviews, who happen to be live when I went live, okay? I don't know if anybody's been there. Um, Tony does product reviews and unboxing. At, he does reviews on as seen on TV, toys, technical items, hardware, food, pet supplies, household items, and more. All with a touch of comedy. So he's he's com he's a comedian, but it's great. Um some of these items he has purchased and some are sent to him for a review. But you want to go on over to Tony's and check out Tony's reviews. Uh, he has live streams. I don't know what the schedule is, um, but he, it's a riot. Next, someone that, that whenever we go out to the B yard, I mean, they show up on the live stream. Chili 
expat, E-X-P-A-T, family. They moved to Chile in 2013 from here. So now they're homesteading in South Chile, just north of the Antarctic, or F Antarctica. Woo! So their family is living in Chile, South America. So their, um, their channel details how-tos and process of moving there, meaning the challenges of staying there, uh, the cost in Chile, immigration, day-to-day -day occurrences. They have a blog, ourchileanadventure.org. That sounds like an interesting channel. I'm going to have to go over there because they usually are here, you know, or when we're over there. And he's going, oh, it's the middle of the night here. Okay. This one I've known for some time. I've seen her in chat. She's a great woman. Tara's crazy life. She's the mother of six boys. She loves to cook and bake. All around good, clean, fun. Great channel. I know her from chats. I love her. She just talks a little about this, a little about that, a little about this. She cooks, she bakes, she does other stuff. I mean, you're all around basic housewife. Next, Duncan, 1900 Homestead. And I just figured out what the 1900 means. <laughs> I took some time. Duncan, are you in here? Yeah, Duncan has a channel. Duncan, 1900. I'm talking about her now, Queen Bee. Uh, they're on a 10-acre farm. And Miss Brenda, her name is Miss Brenda. Um, I've met her. I met her at a Deep South Homestead uh, gathering. She is a wonderful person. Wonderful. Can't say enough about her. Um, their home was built in 1900. And they heat it with three wood stoves. I mean, that's it, folks. Three wood stoves. Including a wood cook stove which is something I want to be, man. I'm looking at the chat there. Be man. She has a, um, Queen B, you can subscribe to anybody in this chat. Okay. Am I wrong, chat? This is, a, this is the homesteading community, Queen B. Uh, no drama, homestead, back to nature. You, you subscribe to anybody here. Okay. They're so cute. Is it okay if I, sure you can. You you go right anybody here. Hey, anybody here? Um, yeah, just uh you know, go through, go through uh the replay of the chat. We're the homesteaders, we're the farmers. Um yes, we do Loma Acres, and we our home is so old. It has the chimney right there in the kitchen for it, doesn't it? You see, you see uh B Man is quiet, doesn't it, dear? Hey, sweetheart. <laughs> anyway. Um, so anyway, um, it includes a wood cook stove. Ugh. They have chickens, rabbits, goats, sheep. And every spring they get pigs from the Amish friends for freezer camp. <laughs> um, they have a couple of good-sized gardens. And folks, I mean good size. Because I think, if I'm not right, she, she orders some insane, she has some insane amount of tomato plants, like 200 or something. Brenda, where are you? I thought, oh my God, that's amazing. Queen Bee, you can sub to anybody here. All of, we're, home, we're the homesteader group. Okay? You got it. No, oh, we don't take drama. No, 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 no. We're too busy trying to live. <laughs> we're too busy with chickens and we've got bees and everything and we have get togethers. You go on and um, look at the gathering. Go to. Um, Queen Bee, go, where is Cher? I don't know if Cher is still in here. Go to Two Family Homestead. Two Family Homestead. And look at the live stream from the shindig that was down south somewhere. Uh, I don't know where, Arkansas somewhere. And you'll know about this. This is a very religious, um, we're all Christians. Uh, no drama. We support one another. And you'll see a little of that later. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. And Brenda likes to um, 
tanning and dehydrating from her garden. She does D, do, do your own DI, DIY projects, repurpose and reuse. So it doesn't go to the landfill. Next, Broussard Homestead, spelled B-R-O-U-S-S-A-R-D. Broussard, wherever you are, I love the pump. Loving the pump. They have a beautiful, uh, their logo, uh, what do you call it on their channel, is a pump. Taking notes? Oh, honey, I'm going to put this up. <laughs> I'm going to put this up. This will be up on YouTube. And um, it, it'll be, you play it over and over. And, you know, look at all the channels and, you know, go to the channels. Queen Bee is new here, folks. I met her over in, in, uh, I don't somewhere where there's a lot of drama and stuff. And she's faithful and been coming and coming because I said, we have homesteaders over here. We don't, you know, we don't do that stuff. So, uh, you know, we have to welcome her into our neighbor, into our group. Besides, we don't do drama. There's enough of us to undrama anybody. But, you know, Queen Bee, um, you know, you just, um, you go to anybody in here, anybody I mentioned. So now I'm on Broussard, back to Broussard, and I love the pump. They got a pump, honey, like the pump I would like out back here. They have a journey of converting an old neglected pasture into a sustainable family homestead. They are near the Louisiana Gulf Coast. Hmm, wonder if they're near those floods out there. You're just one of us, Queen Bee. Sacum's Rich Homestead. We heated a lot this winter. Oh, really? With the cook stuff? Oh, God, Sacum's. I, oh, geez. Um, anyway, they're out on the golf course. Cool. <laughs> golf course. They're on the golf course. They're on the golf coast. They do gardening, preserving the harvest, and raising animals. Now, Oh, they do cooking from scratch, building, do your own, many more interesting topics related to homesteading and self-reliance, weekly live streams for good times and lively conversations. And they just started with bees. Now, last but not least, Andy's Tennessee Life and Homestead. We all know Andy's. He recently moved to seven acres in Tennessee, out in the literally out in the middle of no man's land. Um, recently, he picked up more acreage out there. Uh, country girl uh, purchased two acres or so next to his. We all know country girl. They're kind of sweet on each other. <laughs> I'm sorry, country girl. They're thick on each other. But anyway, um, and his parents live there in like a little house. And his sister, I think, lives there in a little house. And everything was going fine. He's chopping down trees and everything. And tragedy strikes. Uh, he just, his father had to take him to the hospital maybe two weeks ago. And um, it was his gallbladder. And he had pancreatitis. And all kinds of stuff. And they, I, I just felt so sorry for him because they kept doing all these tests. He had a gallstone. Then he didn't have a gallstone. Then he did. Then they tried to take it out. Then they couldn't reach it. It was terrible. Okay. So he can't do anything. He's like, I got to get out of here and go do my work and this, that, and the other. Queen Bee, honey, where do you live? Um, You got that right, Duncan. Because this is going to be... I believe the first ever uh, homestead community workday. People, you know, Andy said, I'll accept some help. You know, people are going there this Saturday. I don't know what time this thing starts. It's a workday. Um, they're gonna, they're taking their equipment, they're gonna be chopping down trees, they're gonna be planting, they're gonna be rototilling, whatever he needs. Folks, it doesn't come any better than that, okay? It just doesn't. Where did Queen Bee say she was from? California. Oh, hungry, hungry Europe. Okay. Wow. Okay, Hungry Europe. That's got to be fascinating. Do you live stream, honey? You know what? How long How long have you been in California? Because I bet you sure. I, we would all like to see you on two family homestead. Uh just to know what it was like over there in Hungary. I'll tell you that right now. 
Would you do it? Would you be a guest on Two Family Homesteads live stream? Gotta watch my time here. Huh? Would you? Yes, Duncan's telling you because she's she's head, she's setting up some of it. I'm not gonna be able to go, but I'm gonna be in the live stream. There's gonna be a live stream somewhere by someone. So I'm gonna be on the lookout. I guess they're deciding between them how that's gonna work. But it's just amazing. I mean, every, I mean, I remember back when his land was just land, and then he had a tent. Oh, folks, he had a tent. He was staying in a tent. You know, out on the land, he's staying in a tent. And, you know, then he had a generator. I mean, ugh, it's come a long way. And, you know, he's just an amazing person. And um, we want to go, yeah, I know. Sure. What do you have to do? I'm so new to YouTube. I have zero direction. Okay, well, Queen B, uh, do you have a channel? Uh, you have to go over to, um, go, I'm going to give you the name. Who is that? The bee lady. Uh, no, no, no. Duncan, can you drop uh, two family homesteads? You know what? Where is she? Uh, where is Duncan? Duncan, how come you're not a mod? Uh, there you go. Um, okay. Now you, you got whatever. Okay. Uh, Duncan, can you, you're a mod, Duncan. Where's your little thing there? Can you drop two family homesteads link in there? So that Queen Bee can uh, be a guest on there. Well, she doesn't know them. She's new to this whole group. group. Okay? She doesn't know. Uh, Mark, do you know? I don't know. Wait, let me see if I can find them. How much time I got? Okay. Uh, here's who you want to go to. I don't have their link. On their... Uh, on their channel, whoa, I'm a great typer over here. Home, S-T-E-A-D? Well, I don't know. Is that it, Sacum's Ridge? I don't know. I, you want to go to Two Family Homestead. And over there, they say, want to be a guest? And you just send in the email. I will always, do you have an email somewhere on your channel, Queen Bee? You're going to love this. Thank you. There it is. Um. Queen B. There you go. Sacums, Ridge, and uh, Duncan. Okay. Okay. It is 7.55. So that's the news of today. We did the bees. We did our channels. I'll be here next week. And I know you all don't like these handouts. So that's why I'm trying to put them up. Are there any questions on what you saw? Uh, and our winter weathering down there. Uh, uh, anything? No. Oh, Queen Bee. That's how we are, Queen Bee. We're a community. We're a community. We're trying, we're survival. We're surviving. Uh, oh yeah. Bees like them. Oh, there goes Bee Man with those, that information. Okay. I don't know if she's still here, but yeah, go on over there. And I would love to hear about, um, life in Hungary. How long have you been out of Hungary, Queen Bee? That's going to be interesting. Whereas, you know, safe community. And Queen Bee, you may want to step by, you know, Cab 7. He, I mean, any of those people. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I've never been in, um, I've never been in, um, who is this guy? Uh, Tony's Reviews. But he came over and watched the Bee stream and said, Y'all are brave. <laughs> okay. So I figured, hey, you know, I'll give him a shout out. So yeah. Um, who is that? You are very welcome. You go back. Wow. It's gonna be amazing over there. Hmm. Okay, now here. Now, next coming up, I'm not sure if she's streaming. Duncan, do you know? But it, it would be country her. She is supposed to go live at eight. So um, even if she doesn't, I'm going to go down there and wait for her. That's country girl. If you just put that in, um, let me see here. Uh, live. I'll tell you, I'm sending folks there. Um, folks, there. Now. 
Okay. She probably is. I hope she is. Uh, I got three minutes, folks. So, uh, oh, I, I can't believe you're in Cali. From Hungary to California, girl, Cal we don't even understand California. And we live here. Right, everybody? We don't understand California. Oh, well, she's answering. I hope she does. And you can sub her too, Queen Bee. No problem. Um, she says in about five minutes, I gotta, she's gotta fire up the desktop. I told her to get firing. Okay. So that's it. I'm gonna check out so I have time to go downstairs. And um, Queen Bee. No, none of us understand California. None of us. None of us. Oh, see what Loma Acres just said? Says so she lived in uh, San Diego for three horrible years. Got out as soon as she could. Yeah. But anyway, um, Queen Bee, we're the homesteaders, farmers. Some of them live off-grid. I don't do off-grid. And what off-grid is, is no electricity. You know, they, I don't know what they do. I, I don't do that. But. We have fruit trees. We have gardens. I can. I make soap. Uh, I sew. I knit. I crochet. Uh, I, I, you know, I make jams and jellies. I can. But it's just our main thing is the bees. So, you know. So I'm going to get going here so I can go down and get comfortable for Country Girl. We be come on over to Country Girl. Everybody else, go on over to Country Girl. She's firing up the laptop, okay? And I will see you there. And uh, bye. See you next week.